good morning. And uh, again, uh, thank you very much for being with us. It's a great honor to have uh, Your Excellencies, the First Ladies of Africa and Merck Foundation, more than a mother ambassadors, uh, here with us. It's a valuable, valuable participation. And it adds a great uh, impact to our programs, our continuation and sustainability. Because you being here, it shows a clear uh, dedication and clear partnership to follow up on all the um, programs we are doing to build healthcare capacity and uh, um, break the stigma of fertility, address different social and health issues in Africa and in the whole world. Uh, I will here state a few facts, but before I do that, I will just state also the objectives of our meeting today. The committee today of Merck Foundation uh, Africa First Ladies um, so, uh, Committee uh, is different than every year. This year we will have dedication, few minutes for each uh, First Lady and uh, uh, Ambassador uh, of Merck Foundation more than a mother to state first a um, few words or uh, stories about the impact of our partnerships and program in uh, her country and uh, this is of course in uh, can be in different ways it can be uh, in a video or in a small uh, word or a testimony of one of the beneficiaries uh, or anything that you think that it is stating an impact in uh, the country but also i would like to give uh, an opportunity to each first lady to present a very important national project that she's doing in her country. It doesn't matter to be with Merck Foundation or not, uh, but it's very important to uh, give uh, an idea for each other so we can share information and experience and success stories so we can learn from each other. So the idea here is to exchange knowledge and, and experience. Every country has different experience, has different um, uh, situations, so can be very much a learning also session. So an appreciation also for the efforts that you are doing. After that, we are going to also watch very important the animation movies, uh, films I told you about, which is the first animation movies been done in Africa, maybe in the whole world, because I didn't see some, something similar on Google or anywhere in the search engines, to raise awareness about diabetes and hypertension. And this is only the first two that we have done in a series of animation movies that are going to be produced by Merck Foundation to raise awareness about different topics. Of course, as an animation movie or film, it's targeting children and youth, but also us and everyone is enjoying watching a nice, colorful, playful, uh, animation movies that deliver an important message and sensitize the community being the voice of the voiceless. So uh, we are aiming for this animation film to be posted on your social media and our social media so everyone can benefit, but also broadcast it on the national TV stations in each country because it can be a very important tool, educational tool and awareness tool for our youth and our children. Um, before I close, I will state a few uh, facts. Uh, till today, Merck Foundation has provided 1,700 scholarships for doctors from 50 countries in 42 specialties. Uh, the specialties are the following. Uh, fertility embryology, sexual and reproductive medicine, women health, clinical psychiatry, urology, family medicine, medical oncology and oncology subspecialties, pain management and uh, palliative care, um, rheumatology, gastroenterology, dermatology, pediatric and child health, stroke medicine, neurology, care of older person, neurosurgery, respiratory medicine, acute medicine, infectious disease, diseases, diabetes, endocrinology, preventive cardiovascular medicine, hypertension, 
critical care, diabetology, and cardiovascular uh, preventive, neurosurgery, obesity and weight management, pediatric emergency medicine, ophthalmology, internal medicine, neuroimaging for research, general surgery, trauma and orthopedic, cancer and clinical oncology, emergency and resuscitation medicine, neonatal care, advanced surgical practice. So all these uh, specialities are available and uh, for each country and each first lady, if you need any of these speciality to be in your country, please approach us and we will going to, I will have these copies also to be uh, sent to you and to your technical team. Uh, I think this can leave a very huge impact. It's a true transformation of patient care in Africa. So I'm very proud of that. Thank you very, very, very much for all of you. Thank you. I'd like to now uh, request Professor Frank uh, to share his thoughts. When we started working on the Merck Foundation some 11 years ago, I would never expect that we had such a roaring success really in helping uh, many, many people in many countries in Africa and in Asia as well. And I must say, and it became very clear to me yesterday, with all the support and the enormous effort and dedication of the First Lady, of this circle of First Ladies, we would never, ever have achieved it. Because, you know, there are many NGOs and charities uh, helping, trying to help, and they do a good job. Uh, but the impact we have in this uh, Merck Foundation circle uh, is mainly the really the result of the effort of the First Ladies. And, uh, of course, First Ladies are there only for a number of years. That's the nature of, of politics. Um, but I'm quite sure many of them will continue to support us because there are remaining very important personalities in their respective countries. So I'm really, really happy uh, seeing all of this. Um, and yesterday we had more than 6,000 people online, which is fantastic. Uh, that really proves that we uh, are making enormous progress and if you look back, and we all, some of you have been with us for some time now, can look back for the past three, four, five, six years, uh, where we are now, even five years ago, I would have not have imagined that. So, thank you all, particularly all the first ladies around this table, and I'm very happy also that we have got two new uh, first ladies joining us, because uh, we have to extend this circle, we uh, have to work further on, there are 52 countries in Africa alone, so there's lots of work to be done, and of course, uh, we all hope, uh, know that you will help us in that respect too. The more people are involved, the more success we will have. So, thank you very much. Now, I'd like us to turn our eyes to the screen. Uh, we're going to watch the animation that uh, Dr. Rasha was talking about. Uh, it's created to raise awareness about health and social issues. Um, and it's called Sugar Free Jude. Milk Foundation. No more diabetes. Reverse diabetes. Goodbye. Diabetes. It's morning rush time to school, and Jude is about to take a big bite into his breakfast on the go. Jude loves donuts, especially sugar coated ones. I love the taste of sugar on my donuts. It makes my money sweet with this juice combination. Jude. Don't you think your eating habits are too unhealthy? I am worried about the rate at which you consume sugar products. <laughs> James, relax. I can't wait to eat my lunch. More donuts? <laughs> There's nothing to worry about. Jude was not bothered about James' concern. He went on eating more sweet foods day after day. As the days passed by, Jude started noticing something quite unusual. My goodness, not again. Jude would wake up several times at night to really. It was so uncomfortable. Not only that, but he also noticed that he would wake up very thirsty. Jude would need to drink water multiple times during the day as well as night. And this also meant using the washroom several times. Oh my god, this is so destructive and shameful. What is it? 
This appears to be the third time you woke up to use the bathroom. Hmm? You even look a bit fat. Very unusual. I have no idea, ma'am. And I've been feeling very thirsty lately as well. And sometimes tired. Uh, we need to see the doctor to make sure all is well with you. I agree, ma'am. It distracts my day at school too much. At the clinic, Dr. Yobo decides to conduct a few tests to confirm his diagnosis about Jude. He opts to do a blood glucose test to check Jude's blood sugar level. So, according to the results, you have type 2 diabetes. Type 2 what? Diabetes is a condition wherein the blood sugar level in your body becomes too high. In type 2 diabetes, there is insulin resistance or relative deficiency of insulin that results in excessive blood sugar which in turn can lead to other health problems. In short, type 2 diabetes is a metabolic condition in which the body's insulin is either ineffective or relatively insufficient to deal with the blood glucose levels. Dr. Yobo continued to explain to Jude about his condition. The exact cause of diabetes is not known, but genetics, family history of diabetes, and an unhealthy lifestyle seem to be the most common and important causative factors. What happens if diabetes is not well controlled? The long-term complications of diabetes can include the following. Stroke, blindness, heart disease, kidney failure, sexual dysfunction, and amputation. Type 2 diabetes is a chronic condition in which there is bodily resistance to the insulin produced by the pancreas and it typically manifests in adolescence. Managing this will require medication and regular blood sugar tests as well as a healthy lifestyle. It was tough to accept for Jude at the beginning. But days of sugar-coated donuts and sweetened drinks are over. But he had support for his new lifestyle. The school made sure his lunch was not full of the usual sweet things and his friends reminded him to take his sugar test and play football or basketball with them regularly to keep healthy. His parents were also supportive, preparing healthy meals for him and removing all sweet and sugary drinks from the house. In fact, all family members became sugar-free too. Back in school, Jude and his friends soon formed a Sugar Police Kids Club to raise awareness about the condition and to help others who had diabetes or were pre-diabetic so they can prevent and early diagnose it. Try to go sugar-free in your meals. Eat more fruits and veggies, along with moderate daily exercise. Our lives can be so sweet without sugar too. Let's all work together to fight diabetes every day. Milk Foundation. No more diabetes. Reverse diabetes. Goodbye diabetes. We can make it work. 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 Push back diabetes. No more diabetes. Reverse it. We can make it work. We can make it work. We can make it work. We can make it. Invite first, Her Excellency Mrs. Neo Jen. Masisi, the First Lady of the Republic of Botswana. As a primary school, our mandate is to teach primary education, including special education. This is people with learning difficulties, learning disabilities, and so on. We received the SOE machine around April 2021 from the First Lady, funded by MAC Foundations. The skills that the learners are now applying in SOE are now being developed. Uh, when we started using needles, just simple needles doing basic stitch, stitches, we just selected just a special few number of, of learners. But these machines now are digging out talent from different learners. They develop 
more cognitive skills, they develop more psychomotor skills and also interactive skills with other students as they are sewing and they also develop the, uh, the knowledge of some technical items and the gadgets that they are using uh, with the sewing machine. As I speak to you right now, we have um, two students that have excelled in sewing and they were sent to some institution in Silibe Pique where they are also doing well uh, within the sewing department. The, the girl child when they are empowered, they are able to be economically sound. So if one is economically sound, they cannot be abused. And if they are, I mean, they will not be maybe vulnerable to abuse, especially gender-based violence. My dear sisters, Your Excellencies, Ambassador of Mac Foundation, More Than a Mother, Professor Frank, Chief of Mac Foundation Board of Trustees, and yourself, Dr. Rasha, CEO of Mac Foundation, and ladies and gentlemen, uh, Dumela, or good morning. They always say um, a picture tells a thousand stories. It is all there, I think, said in the video, but. Uh, it would be an error on my part not to say anything, particularly that I have a mouth that God has given me. So let me speak a little bit, just to say um, in our country, like your countries, gender-based violence is rampant. We've just seen it escalating, and it's coming in many forms. And um, when we asked for these machines from Russia, it was really in pursuit of tackling this problem. And one would say, why was it, why was it at a primary school? You'll hear uh, later on how we engaged at a multi-sectoral level to address gender-based violence. And persons with disabilities were a group. The school that you just saw is a school where there's a, a class of children or a group of children who are called children who are going through special needs or require special needs. So they are persons with disability in some, in some form. Let me also say, in my country, women are caretakers, yet the wealth lies in the hands of the men. And therefore, our women who are economically deprived are actually sort of entrapped they are in these relationships that they cannot move out of because of gender-based violence. Let me also say that, ladies and gentlemen, we we'll realize, and I think from many of our studies, that issues and problems are so interrelated and that in solving them also, the solutions can also be very interrelated. So this little snippet just brought out quite a number of issues there that you've captured yourselves. But let me say, despite the successes of this project, this is just one site. These sewing machines were distributed around the country, but the challenges that we are having is that you find that in some sites, we've given out these machines, but they still require additional training or they need additional supplies. And this is where we will also ask other donors if there's Committee X during the year 2021, that committee is voted out or leadership is changed, that continuity and rigor of taking on the project sort of falls behind. But overall, we have seen what we call miracles. So let me thank you again, Dr. Rasha, and you, Professor. I thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. It's great to have this impact and this video. We are proud to be partnering with you, and uh, I'm sure we are going 
also to expand, not only in uh, this type of projects, but also, as we discussed yesterday, with regards to the scholarships that we provided for uh, doctors uh, from Botswana in different specialty. Till today, we have 41 uh, scholarships, and we are aiming to have even more. Thank you very, very, very much. We'll now listen to Her Excellency Madame Angeline Daishimia, the First Lady of the Republic of Burundi, and she'll also uh, she has a video. Mes sœurs chères, mes, mes sœurs, bonjour. Euh, pour moi, c'est une immense joie d'être avec vous et de partager les expériences. Et comme nous sommes ici, nous sommes venus pour nous inspirer de vos riches expériences. Et vous aussi, j'espère que vous avez besoin de vous inspirer de notre expérience. Ce que vous venez de voir, j'invite M. Désiré pour se lever afin de vous dire brièvement ce que nous réalisons au Burundi et avant de vous dire ce que ce que nous réalisons, je l'invite de vous présenter notre beau pays et après de vous dire ce que nous faisons dans l'office de la première dame du Burundi pour le développement 
aussi dans la Fondation Bonne Action que je dirige. Je l'invite parce que c'est un technicien qui travaille dans, dans l'office et dans ma fondation au quotidien. Aussi, euh, c'est un homme qui maîtrise bien euh, l'anglais. Il, 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 il peut s'exprimer bien pour que tout le monde et, pour, comprenne ce qu'il vous présente. Sans trop tarder, je l'invite de se lever et aller devant pour vous dire les, les bienfaits de la Fondation MEC, les fluides ici de notre rencontre et aussi, je ne peux pas terminer sans féliciter le maître des cérémonies. C'est un professionnel de formation. Il faut euh, l'encourager et je l'invite Thank you, Your Excellency, uh, the First Lady of Burundi, Your Excellencies, uh, CEO of MEC Foundation and uh, Professor Frank, good morning. I will briefly share about the video that you saw from uh, stories being made uh, from Burundi, a small country of East Africa of 12 million people. and. Uh, it's been three years now that the, her, her Excellency the First Lady is in office leading the Office of First Lady for Development in Burundi and also the Foundation Bon Action Mugiraneza. And um, for the three years that Her Excellency the First Lady has been uh, uh, chairing uh, development actions in partnership with the uh, MEC Foundation, many success stories have been achieved. I will go first, uh, starting from the scholarships that uh, many Burundi doctors have benefited from in partnership with the MEC Foundation. So far, uh, 54 um, scholarships. And uh, I will mention just two cases. A case of uh, um, Dr. Sudi Ndikumana, uh, who did uh, training in uh, diabetics. After he graduated, he went back to Burundi in the center of Bujumbura city, a locality called Buyenzi. He created a center to diagnose and uh, provide treatment for uh, many. The Buyenzi city is, uh, is uh, inhabited by majority of Muslims who like to use uh, tea and uh, sh much sugar in the morning. So the, the Buyenzi locality is known to, have to be inhabited with the people who have like, um, many uh, diabetic patients. So right there, he set up a Shifa, Shifa Medical Center that uh, treats diagnosis and uh, treats uh, diabetes. And um, he is making a great, great impact in the city because he's making a free, free of charge diagnosis for and many uh, people who are like very uh, low, of low income from that locality, they get a free of charge uh, diagnosis. And uh, another um, laureate of Mac Foundation training is a Dr. Nibitanga Gilbert. Uh, he's also from another uh, suburb in Bujumbura city. And he set up a center called uh, um, Vyaruheke. Vyaruheke means uh, give birth and carry on your back. <laughs> that's, the, that's the meaning of the, the center. Vyaruheke center is for, as a fertility center. And he is actually the fir very first, very first graduate uh, from Mac Foundation, and uh, he's a pioneer in the area of um, fertility in Burundi. Right now, we have other students uh, who are who are in the training, who are, who are um, following the training, but they they've just followed him. They are like they be behind him, so he's also making a big a big impact in the city of Burundi. Um, 
In the video you saw uh, Dr. Russia coming uh, to Burundi, this was last May, on the 3rd of May, there was being inaugurated, inaugurated uh, the fir very first fertility center in Burundi, IVF center in Burundi. Uh, it has been set up by Her Excellency the First Lady and um, we are very proud because um, Burundi not being known as a country of low income uh, people, uh, it has been a very big challenge uh, for Burundians to go and seek uh, IVF uh, help abroad in, many, in uh, Europe, in uh, India, in other countries. Now Her Excellency the First Lady is making a big impact. Um, a law on fertility is already in place, already now. She has pioneered that. And uh, uh, the center, Umugiraneza Polyclinic, now is uh, running. And the, very fr the first batch, with the support of Indian um, specialists who came to support Dr. Gilbert, the first fertility uh, graduate from a foundation, have come and the first, very first batch of 23 women has been conducted and we are expecting the very first, about, Dr. Gibbard is, is saying about four to six, four to six babies will be coming soon. <laughs> so we're very, we're very happy about that. Uh, we add two other uh, specialties that we, uh, she, has, she has pioneered and for which we need uh, we need a support. She has pioneered two centers, two more centers. One is a psychiatry center in the northern province of Burundi. It's called Ngozi province. And um, because of the many years of uh, tribal wars in Burundi, we came, we came, came to find out that uh, there are many uh, drug addicts and um, okay. uh, who, go, who go mental. Yes. So she has pioneered this center. And, but we have a lack, big lack of, uh, of our, um, skilled, uh, yes, skilled uh, yes. yeah, doctors. But another center is a center for uh, obstetric fistula. Okay. That's, that's in Gitega Center, yes. Gitega Province. Yes. But also there too, we need uh, surgical um, uh, doctors. Training. Yeah. Yes. 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 yes, thank you. Yes, thank you very, very much. Welcome. Your Excellency, thank you very much for this inspiring story. Uh, this is a really, uh, a real good model, excellent good, uh, role model for establishing the first public IVF center in low-income country for all the infertile couple uh, to be more than mothers and to be more than fathers uh, with the local expert. Thank you very much. <laughs> Round of applause. Just to state uh, that we, in partnership with Her Excellency the First Lady of Burundi, provided 15 scholarships for fertility experts and embryologists who is now running the uh, IVF center and other small fertility clinics around the country, which is amazing. But also we are uh, very proud with the diabetes center established by Dr. Sudi. And this is also the first diabetes clinic in Burundi. And we provided 35 scholarships to train diabetes diabetes and hypertension uh, doctors in Burundi, which is uh, amazing as well. Uh, we promise to support the other two causes, uh, and we will discuss that together. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. My dear sisters, your Excellencies, African First Ladies, Chairman of Mark Foundation Board of Trustees, Professor Frank, uh, CEO of Mark Foundation, uh, Senator and Dr. Russia, and all the Mark Foundation partners, alumni, medias, distinguished guests, all the staffs of the First Lady uh, here present. Uh, I would like uh, briefly to give you an idea, as I already invite you all to meet Cabo Verde, I just want to give you a briefly idea which country are we talking about. We are an archipelago of 10 islands. One of them is a natural reserve, so it's not habitated. So we have nine different uh, pressure, uh, uh, so um, uh, different uh, island in Cabo Verde, each one with uh, his beauty. So I can say to you that one island, if you visit one island, you don't need to visit the other because they are 
all uh, different islands. And uh, for you to know, Cabo Verde has uh, a half million habitants. So it's 500,000 habitants. We have more Cape Verdean out of Cape Verde than in Cabo Verde. And uh, just for you to know the importance of our diaspora, 25% of our GDP comes from the immigrants. And the other 25% comes from tourism. So we are tourist and diasporic uh, country. And uh, we just have less than 50 years of independence. Uh, in uh, 2025, we'll do 50 years of uh, independence. And we have a young, uh, young uh, country. Um, so this is the big challenge we have. We are a baby country, as I used to say. Uh, we, have, we have only uh, 50 years of uh, independence. Most of our population is young, is a young population. 70% of our population has less than 35 years. So all the challenge that the young population has, we have it. As a Cape Verdean, I'm really, really proud of what we already achieved in 50 years of independence. When you consult the democratic index, all the world, Cape Verdean, is really well positioned. When you see the Mo Ibrahim Index, Cabo Verde has a champion of Mo Ibrahim. Uh, when you see the level of alphabetization in Cabo Verde, we have the highest one. But we still have, as Brian said, some gaps. The violence against women is one of the challenge. And uh, I will just, it, uh, it's something I normally talk about a lot, because if we are um, managing a gender uh, agenda, we must consider men and women. In Cabo Verde, there's nothing, nothing a man can do that a woman can't do. There's nothing. So we have all the legal support. If a girl wants to be a doctor, she can be a doctor. She can be a professor. She can be a sportswoman. Everything, she can have heritage in the same proportion as his brother. So legally, we have all the support for equality. In politician right now, every party that wants to present a candidate, he has to have 40% of women in the list. The issue is a culture and social issue because when a girl is born, he, he born with the fact that you born to take care. So when it's Christmas is uh, getting close, what do you offer a girl in Christmas? Kitchen, ki kitchen, uh, um, toys to training the taking care daily life of the family. You just give boys arms, uh, balls, things to play, but the girls, since the beginning, you teach them to take care of the family. So for me, the, the different way we educate men and women brings this gap. Because normally, since the beginning, the boy doesn't participate in nothing that has to be with the house. So we must see the way we are educating our boys for this gap. What we expect for, the, for a girl, what we expect from um, a boy. Uh, and this brings this uh, problem we have right now in Cabo Verde. That is, the men are not prepared for all the freedom we already get. Uh, we get a lot in Cape Verde. And I really must say to you that if you go in Cabo Verde Friday night, you go out, you will probably find more girls in the restaurants at night than men. And the boys are not prepared. Our men, they are not prepared to 
this to have like this fighting in the management in the direction of the boards of the company if you have three places they will put two men and one because now it's obliged to have at least 40% so we must prepare since the beginning our men and boys to this idea of equality of opportunity. So this is my experience regarding the gaps we already face in the education of the society for equal uh, opportunity. And this is for me one of the, re the reason we still have uh, feminicides in uh, Cabo Verde because the, the husbands and the boyfriends are not prepared for all the freedom we already get and all the level of education. In Cabo Verde, most of the uh, people in the university are girls. Most of the people who has better um, performance in the high schools, they are girls. So the issue is not the access to the education, but uh, what we do after this level of education. We have a problem of um, pregnancy in the youth girls, and because of this, they abandoned the high school. And um, I'm proud to say that one of our uh, former first lady has a school for the girls that get pregnant and get out of the educational uh, system. So this is one of the, uh, the gaps. The index of um, girls that get pregnant during the process of uh, uh, studying. In Cape Verde, the contraceptives is free, is for free. But we have the problem of people to go to the place to get what is free. So it's a small community, everybody knows everybody, and if you see a young girl going to a public health uh, space to get contraception, she probably can be denounced to the family or people starting to talk, and this is not uh, uh, a problem of access because it's, it's free for everybody, it's a cultural and social uh, issue. And um, another uh, campaign uh, I was doing uh, this year was the problem or the taboo, I used to say the taboo of menstrual health. Nobody talks about it. It's something that should be normal, but it's not talking in the family. And you know, every woman has to, to have menstruation. It's the basic condition, it's biologic. But not every girl has the possibility to have a good um, health menstruation because sometimes they don't have access to water. Water is a problem in Cabo Verde, is a challenge in Cabo Verde. So sometimes they don't go to the school because they don't have access to the pets. They don't have access to the water to, to do the cleaning. And so I made a spot uh, with the uh, the support of uh, United Nations and our organization in Cabo Verde that we call Verde Fam, saying that in the family, fathers has to be aware and talking with the girls uh, and give support during the menstruation uh, uh, period. So it shouldn't be a taboo. And uh, I think it was uh, quite success because I still receive a lot of message of fathers saying thank you because you call me attention to talk with my girls, with my daughters about menstruation. So this is uh, the gaps I think we still uh, finding, uh, we still have in uh, Cabo Verde, and I'm really uh, anxious to start to work with Mark Foundation regarding all the capacity for our doctors. Um, we have. Uh, a small community of specialists in Cabo Verde, uh, and we hope with the Merck Foundation we could uh, get it uh, bigger and have all your support to work with. Uh, I saw your experience with the uh, disabled kids, uh, Noe, uh, and so we have the same issue in Cabo Verde. 
and I still saying that there are kids that has a lot, a lot of potential. We just need to discover the potential. So I'm really anxious to work with you, Russia and Professor Frank, and do a huge impact in this, in the, in this young country that is Cabo Verde. Thank you. Yes, for, thank you very much for this brief. And yes, definitely we are planning a lot of things together and we'll start soon. Uh, actually, we started already like one month ago, but we in continuation. Uh, with regards to uh, the problem of menstruation health, you will, listen, you will hear from Her Excellency First Lady of Liberia, her experience uh, with that as well. But we have also an expert who is going to join us today for the Sanitary Towers Production uh, Establishment in Africa. Thank you very, very much. Let me welcome Her Excellency Madame Brigitte Todera. First Lady of the Central African Republic. Rasha Kelej, très chère sœur Première Dame d'Afrique, je vais vous entretenir sur deux, trois aspects. D'abord, notre partenariat avec la Fondation Merck a démarré en 2016. Et je vous parle par rapport à notre pays qui a connu des conflits récurrents. Donc, euh, je n'aurai pas beaucoup de, de, de problèmes de, de discussion par rapport à, à nos réalités. Donc, tout d'abord, je voudrais parler de, le, le, du projet Empowering Berna avec euh, la Fondation Merck ce projet a eu beaucoup d'impact sur les femmes centrafricaines, les femmes infertiles en particulier. Et par rapport à ce que je disais, nos conflits récurrents ont fait que ces femmes ont monté des projets et des activités génératrices de revenus. Mais malheureusement, à chaque fois qu'il y a les conflits, leur activité ne tient pas parce qu'à chaque fois, il faut se déplacer pour aller dans des, des se déplacer d'un endroit à l'autre. Et notre pays a connu toujours ce problème qui fragilise nos femmes infertiles et qui fragilise aussi leurs activités génératrices de revenus. Avec ce projet Berna, Empowering Berna, ces femmes, lorsqu'on les a regroupées, pour leur faire faire ces activités, elles ont eu une dignité. Parce que c'est la première fois que ce projet a, eu, a vu le jour dans notre pays. C'est la première fois qu'on a pensé aux femmes infertiles dans notre pays. Parce que vous savez qu'en Afrique, le problème d'infertilité dans un couple est un problème très crucial où la femme est toujours stigmatisée par rapport à l'homme, ce qui entraîne toujours la répudiation de ces dernières. Elles sont toujours répudiées et ça les fragilise davantage. C'est pourquoi, avec le projet Empowering Berna, nous avons réalisé une activité pilote. Et cette activité avait résisté. Mais après, ça a toujours été les mêmes problèmes, conflits et déplacements des femmes, et c'est la population entière qui se déplace. Et pour cela, les femmes ne peuvent pas être stables déjà dans leur tête et être stables dans un endroit où ils peuvent réaliser leurs activités génératrices de revenus. Alors, ce que nous voudrions faire, c'est, je vais parler plutôt des projets que nous allons réaliser avec le, la Fondation Merck pour pouvoir rehausser, pour pouvoir reprendre ces activités parce que la situation chez nous commence à se normaliser. Ça va nous permettre de reprendre ces activités parce que nous avons déjà fait une cartographie. Nous avons identifié 555, 554 femmes avec lesquelles nous allons réaliser un projet d'activité génératrice de revenus. Et ce projet, nous allons le faire 
avec la Fondation Merck. Ça va nous permettre d'identifier 3 000 femmes en 2024 pour pouvoir recommencer avec la Fondation Merck les activités génératrices de revenus. Et nous avons aussi, euh, nous allons le faire à échelle. Avant, nous avons fait au niveau de la capitale Bangui et nous avons fait la cartographie au niveau d'une de, de nos préfectures. Maintenant, nous allons le faire à échelle pour étendre dans toutes les localités de chez nous. Nous avons aussi retenu le projet euh, concernant la formation des médecins. La formation des médecins est importante chez nous parce que c'est comme une bouffée d'oxygène qui va ramener ces médecins à des spécialités. Nous avons déjà eu une formation de la part de la Fondation Merck. Nous avons un médecin qui a été formé en oncologie. Malheureusement, il n'est pas venu pour faire une présentation parce qu'il est en train de soutenir son doctorat en ce moment en République centrafricaine. S'il était là, il devait parler de son expérience par rapport à cette formation qu'il a eue ici au niveau de l'Inde. Nous avons aussi deux médecins qui ont été formés en diabétologie. En ce moment, vous savez que dans un pays où il y a des conflits, généralement, la population n'est pas à des pressions qui fait que les maladies cardiovasculaires s'accentuent. Et ça, nous avons besoin de diabétologues, nous avons besoin de médecins qui, sont, qui peuvent prendre en charge cette catégorie de population, surtout les femmes infertiles qui déjà sont fragilisées de par leur infertilité, et aussi la population qui a subi beaucoup de conflits, beaucoup de, de, de pressions, et beaucoup de traumatismes psychologiques. Et nous avons besoin de tout cela parce que la Fondation, je, je suis très heureuse d'apprendre que la Fondation veut prendre en charge les médecins et maintenant de, en manière, de manière présentielle. Et ça, ça c'est comme une bouffée d'oxygène pour mon pays parce que ce serait dans beaucoup de spécialités et ça va nous permettre de faire des, des avis de, à candidature aux médecins qui souhaiteraient être formés en Inde, en présentiel, dans les universités euh, appropriées. Alors, je voudrais remercier le, la Fondation Merck parce qu'elle nous a permis de rehausser et de donner leur dignité à ces femmes infertiles chez nous, parce que nous avons eu des témoignages de chacune d'elles que depuis que nous avons commencé à identifier ces femmes, elles ont retrouvé leur dignité. C'est ce que j'aimerais qu'on continue avec la Fondation Merck pour pouvoir amplifier, pour pouvoir étendre sur tout notre territoire. Et je remercie beaucoup la Fondation Merck pour ce projet que j'aimerais que ça continue et qu'en 2024, nous pouvons identifier ces 3000 femmes avec lesquelles nous allons faire une innovation et leur donner leur dignité à travers les activités génératrices de revenus que nous allons réaliser. J'aimerais que le Dieu Tout-Puissant fasse que la Fondation, Cris de, la Fondation Merck puisse approuver ce projet pour qu'en 2024, nous pourrons faire quelque chose de positif avec ces femmes. C'est pourquoi j'avais demandé dans mon discours d'hier, si la Fondation Merck le permet, on pourrait faire venir une des représentantes de ces femmes pour qu'elles puissent parler de leur expérience, ce que nous avons fait, l'impact que ça a eu sur elles, l'impact positif qu'elles ont eu par rapport à ce projet. Et j'aimerais encore insister sur la formation des médecins parce que 
Nous le savons tous qu'en Afrique, le nombre de, mal, de patients dépasse le nombre des médecins dans tous les domaines, dans toutes les spécialités. Et chez moi, c'est encore euh, pire parce que nous avons toujours été dans des situations de conflit et il n'y a pas de stabilité. Mais en ce moment, je puis vous rassurer que nous pouvons reprendre ces projets avec Merck pour que nous puissions aller de l'avant et améliorer la, les conditions de vie de nos populations, surtout des femmes, dans le cadre de la santé et de la reproduction, pour éviter les morts des mamans qui vont donner naissance à des enfants. Et ce sont des morts évitables. Et je souhaiterais que nous puissions aller de l'avant dans cette optique et dans ces deux projets, et aussi éduquer Linda, qui nous a vraiment rendu beaucoup service, et le projet que vous avez initié avec les 20 filles, ça a eu beaucoup d'impact, surtout pour les parents qui n'ont pas les moyens de subvenir aux besoins de leurs filles qui sont brillantes, mais qui n'ont pas les moyens d'avoir accès à, aux études supérieures. Et ce projet nous a permis vraiment de soulager les parents par rapport à ces, à ces filles brillantes qui vont continuer sur cinq ans leurs études pour aller dans les classes supérieures, dans les universités. Je pense que, je comme je vous l'ai dit, je n'ai pas beaucoup de choses à dire parce que c'est toujours un recommencement avec des pays qui connaissent beaucoup de conflits. Donc, je vous remercie et j'espère que la Fondation Merck prendra en compte notre projet. Thank you very much, uh, Your, Her Excellency, the First Lady of Central African Republic, Madame Brigitte. Uh, I just want to emphasize that we started our uh, partnership in 2015, being the first First Lady joined uh, the Merck Foundation uh, ambassadorship program and more than a mother and this is something we are very proud of. Uh, as we agreed in our one-to-one -one meeting yesterday, day before yesterday, we are going to continue all the support for our programs and the scholarships with a speci special specif um, focus on cancer, diabetes and hypertension like we agreed. So thank you very much again. I'd like now to uh, invite Her Excellence Mrs. Uh, Fatumata Babaro, the First Lady of the Republic of the Gambia, and we'll first watch a video. This is the New Gambia. Her Excellency, Fatumata Babaro, the First Lady of the Republic of the Gambia, believes there is something extraordinary in serving people with care. Her aim is to give vulnerable people new hope, enabling them to live a better life. And this is what gave birth to the FAB Foundation, a charity organization on a mission to complement government efforts in reducing extreme poverty by supporting the poor communities. We bring relief and empower the disadvantaged women, youths, children and vulnerable groups also supporting rural women and local community initiatives for an opportunity to dwell and carry a new hope for a brighter future in the gambia the fab foundation has structured programs to raise funds to intervene in several health matters in the gambia professional doctors from senegal came here operating people, sponsored by First Lady. We coordinate and assist in rare surgical cases for the children and support financially in the surgery for babies at the pediatric ward surgical units. This baby has such a fuse prematurely and it, the brain, when it grows, it doesn't grow properly, so it goes up. Well, we need to remodel the skull 
by doing uh, surgery. Bringing people from other countries to come and operate is cheaper. They can operate more people. Most of these patients, they cannot afford going um, overseas for these kinds of treatments. We say a very big thank you to the first lady and the doctors who will, in one way or the other, contribute for this thing to be successful. The foundation is currently searching opportunities to build the first children's hospital in the Gambia, targeting advanced care for the children all around the Gambia and neighboring countries. Her Excellency, the First Lady of the Republic of the Gambia, Madam Fatou Barbaro, we are gathered here once again to witness and support the first newborn babies of the year. We promote awareness on women health issues such as antenatal infections and harmful traditional practices. in the public institutions in the Gambia has gone through years of dilapidation. All our toilets are spoiled. Some people come and they say that they want to come back to hell. They come and see the letter, nobody comes and help us. The rehabilitation of toilets in selected clinics and hospitals is a program supporting health promotion activities. Infertility in men and women at child-bearing age is a case neglected in this part of the world. The future is much, much better than the past. The future, you will have your specialities, your specialists who will treat you, who will educate you how to prevent infertility. We educate the affected group through organized radio programs and roadshows by bringing awareness, empowering them, giving free counseling with medical checkup and treatment to them. The foundation aims to set up a cancer research center in the Gambia to complement the effort of the Gambia government to promote cancer awareness and screening campaigns throughout the Gambia. To support women in agriculture, we supply them with tools to enable them to work easily and more efficiently. Programs are designed to support local social entrepreneurs and youths through skills development and product enhancement with skills that raise domestic products such as soap making, packaging, juice making, organic products and so much more. To support youth empowerment through educational and social development schemes. A yearly camp was set up focusing on skills in home economics, hygiene, and inspiring girls to be confident and empowered to pursue their ambitions. <laughs> Support frequently goes out to communities and families who are suffering from distress due to poverty. Women who have very rare and difficult circumstances such as widows and very severely marginalized women due to matters of health and homelessness or natural disasters. An open forum for women in West Africa from all walks of life, especially women living in the provincial areas, gather to connect and discuss pertinent welfare issues affecting women. The aim is to empower one another and support multi-sectoral causes through various breakout sections chaired by influential women in various societies and companies. The FAB Foundation has embarked on these key campaigns and we cannot do it alone. We need your support. Please sponsor and partner with us on our programs and interventions. Email us for more information. Thank you. My dear sisters, um, African First Ladies, Professor Frank, my dear sister um, Rasa Kaleji, Senator Rasa Kaleji. Our encounter was in 2017 in Addis Ababa. 
after meeting Rasa the first time, she invited me to Egypt for the first luminary in Egypt. We attended, and after that, she decided to come to the Gambia. The first um, project that we did together was to empower infertile women, 10 of them, and each of them were given $5,000. From there, we... Huh? Yeah, then from there, we, um, we, we, we established those uh, women to be empowered, and they were trained to do businesses so that they can be independent. From there, we train over 40 doctors on different specialties. Now, I can also proudly say I have built a new school for the deaf. I just inaugurated it on Thursday, then I left the Gambia on Monday. It's like less than a week. And it's a 10 classroom block, fully tiled with a kitchen and we're going to equip it with um, tailoring machines and other skill works because, you know, for them, they need to learn skill alongside with being disabled. And I can also say that I donated 30 machines for gender-based violence victims. In the Gambia, we have more of Muslims than Christians. The population of the Muslim is higher, and most of them prefer their children to go to Madarasa, that's the Quranic school, than being in the normal school. Then what I'm doing now is with three years, I will put back 65,000 children back to school so that they can get quality education. With that, we can also continue the collaboration that we have with MAC because I feel that Gambians are not, especially women, are not going into the tertiary education. They stopped at primary or secondary school, and I'm encouraging them so that they can get more women into tertiary education. And a week ago, too, I sponsored 10 women and girls into STEM, so that we, it's a male-dominated area, and I want more women into STEM, too, so that they can be role models for other women, girls to uh, be inspired by them so we can have more technicians in any field that we want, or scientists, or techno, uh, mathematics, or engineers, because it's a male-dominated area. We've been trying, and Rasa, yesterday, I will, not, uh, will attest to you, I, after leaving the lunch table, I decided to go and call on the doctors that are here to ask them what they're going through. And what we were exper uh, experiencing between us was, we are going back home, form groups of each of the specialties that they learn. The ones with diabetes will form a diabetic club and we see what we can do with the diabetic club, whether we can build a lab for them so that we can be training more, uh, testing more people to be in communities. Then the ones with oncology, we will set a center so that we can start processes of uh, treating people. With the ones that did fertility, we will try and have an IVF center so that we can also make sure that women, we put smiles on women and men in the Gambia. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. The First Lady of the Gambia, Her Excellency Mrs. Fatoumata Bahbaru. It's really amazing. Our journey since 2017, being also one of the first First ladies joined maybe the second after Central African Republic to our uh, uh, ambassadorship and our partnership uh, programs. Uh, and I am proud to share that we together provided 39 scholarships to young Gambian doctors to be the lo first, first local specialist in many, many specialties, uh, fertility and, uh, and oncology and diabetes and hypertension and neonatal care and surgery. So there is too many uh, first specialties in the Gambia which allow you to transform the patient care like you did now with all your support through FAB foundation 
to do even more and more and capitalize on this and have exponential growth. So we are going to continue providing uh, the training for doctors until there is no need anymore. Uh, you will always be needed. <laughs> and of course, also, we will support further training for your uh, diabetes societies. You are going to uh, establish and fertility IVF and other training uh, courses. And of course, the girls' education. So thank you very much. It was very inspiring and very diverse and multi-sectoral plan you are doing for the new Gambia. So thank you very, very much. I'd like uh, us now to uh, listen to Her Excellency Mrs. Rebecca Akufo Ado, First Lady of the Republic of Ghana. Good morning once again to us all here. I am not going to say very much, but uh, to say a very big thank you to Merck Foundation so far for granting 135 scholarships to Ghanaian doctors. We are really very grateful, and we know that this is... Uh, going to be of great help. And uh, like Oliver Twist, we'd like to ask for more scholarships. Um, not to forget anything, I have a speech, so I shall read it out. Um, we in Africa have a most profound situation. Our girls and women are daily faced with challenges with their education, health, career, and social and economic status. This has negative consequences on their ability to choose and aspire for more ambitious prospects in life, because this is unacceptable in our 21st century. The good news is that all over Africa, we have inspiring stories of women and girls, including your own stories, Sister First Ladies, who have triumphed against the odds. These are the stories which inspired me to establish the Because I Want to Be Mentorship Program. I recall that soon after I became First Lady, I was presented with some data on the attrition rate of girls in primary and junior high schools along the coastal belt of Ghana, and the statistics were troubling. Because I know firsthand that when girls have access to education, especially higher education, they have a considerably better chance at doing well in life. There's a lot of liberating power behind the deliberate actions we take to empower women and girls. I was fortunate to have UNFPA, the Ghana Education Service, and a group of successful women role models from various disciplines who partnered with the Rebecca Foundation to reduce the attrition rate. In our school, Girls received inspiring mentorship from our mentors who spend an afternoon every fortnight with them. However, there remained a large chunk of adolescent girls who had dropped out of school and could not go back to school. They also were put into apprenticeship, training with female master craftspersons, and we made significant gains here. To give you an example, last year, the Rebecca Foundation trained about 60 women in bakery and cosmetology. Among these were young university students who acquired skills in manicure and pedicure. They have gone on to provide these services to both students and faculty at their university. The income they make is a major source of sustenance and funding for their education. I also encountered two teen mothers who were unemployed their newly acquired skills in baking and startup capital enabled them to start thriving businesses. They are now capable breadwinners who have been empowered to improve the livelihoods of their families. And I'm greatly inspired by these individual stories of triumph. These girls will become presidents, scientists, teachers, businesswomen, politicians, etc. Ultimately, they will be the mothers who nurture the next generation. They will be the role models for the next generation. If we empower them, the next generation will be empowered. Only the empowered can empower. So once again, thank you, Meg Foundation. And I think we have also got, got a, a short clip to show you. I thank you. I want to be a lawyer and I want to be a doctor. I aspire to be a cardiac surgeon in the future. I'm in school today because I want to be a cosmetologist in the future. And before I achieve this goal, I need to be educated to the highest level. On some of my runs and the um, 
Greater Accra Coastal Belt. Um, I, have, I found that there are lots of girls who uh, are dropouts. And so we decided to do something about that. We know that to empower women, they need to be educated. And that forms the basis for our girls' education program called Because I Want to Be. Because I Want to Be is in two components. Firstly, mentorship of adolescent girls who are in school by positive female role models. These young girls get the opportunity to meet and interact with counselors, coaches, and their mentors on how to realize their dreams. During COVID, when schools were out, the Rebecca Foundation and its partner, the Merck Foundation, worked together to put the Because I Want to Be in School Mentorship sessions on national television. This resulted in us reaching many more girls than we were previously doing with our in-person sessions. Our uh, women in rural areas, those in the markets, those on, on the farms, technology is for each and every one of us. A future where there is more respect for persons with disabilities. I learned that being passive is letting others decide for you. Being aggressive is deciding for others. Being assertive is deciding for yourself. For out-of-school girls who cannot go back to school, they go through apprenticeship to acquire employable skills and are mentored by female master crafts persons. We have the mentors who are uh, business owners who mentor these girls, train them, take them on, train them. Um, over a period, some in dressmaking, catering, and for that we give them a, a, a stipend for transportation and for, for lunch. And then we give them startup kids so they can start their own uh, small businesses. I'm now working at Fashion. I'm being employed here, so I want to work here for a while and later set up my own business. I'm much grateful to the First Lady and the Rebecca Foundation for this wonderful opportunity. I'm now who I am because of them. I want to say a big thank you to them. God bless them. Great, this is really inspiring. And I want also to acknowledge that this success of the program, I Want to Be, uh, by the Rebecca Foundation, and also we had a little partnership with uh, through Merck Foundation. It was posted on our social media, where we have five million followers, and there is millions of girls that watched it for, through Af uh, Africa. So it, it didn't only help the African, as uh, the Ghanaian girls, but many girls in, uh, in Africa. So it was really inspiring that we also started our program, Our Africa by Merck Foundation, to start to raise awareness and sensitize community about different social. So it was a really inspiring idea, creative idea. So thank you very much for uh, having this and to make us part of it. It was really uh, great. And of course, regarding the scholarships, uh, we are going to continue, of course, the scholarships for more doctors, especially the specialties you asked about yesterday. So it's going to happen. Uh, and uh, uh, I also want to acknowledge the small businesses you are doing, because it's really creative uh, ideas of small businesses that can fit with uh, women uh, who has uh, lower education or they want to have a small business like victims of uh, infertility or uh, victims of gender-based violence, because they can really make a good income to, from women to women. So it's really am am amazing. Thank you very much, Madam Rebecca. Let's now welcome Her Excellency Mrs. Claire Marie Ware, First Lady of the Republic of Liberia, we'll start with the video. Liberia has clocked 20 years of uninterrupted peace and stability. Recovery, reconstruction and development are the order of the day, especially under the leadership of President George Manu Weir. In support of these national efforts, First Lady Claude Marie Weir is undertaking life-impacting projects across the country with a goal to bless as many people as God has blessed her. If you're happy and you know it, if you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, say 
When I got married to the president, George Weir, um, Liberia was still being affected with the civil crisis. And um, I saw how it affected him being a, a citizen of Liberia. He was born here, we visited the country, and I see how the people suffered from, it's the post-war era where people were suffering. And even before I became First Lady in 2014, when um, I can remember when I came to Liberia and it just broke my heart because I saw so many, not only children, I see children suffering. I see children not being educated. I see the elderly uh, in need. And then, then I said to now uh, uh, Fina Bundo that, you know, 2014, I want to come back to Liberia and I want to hit the road with you. I said that to Fina, I'm sure she'll remember. And we're going to go out and we're going to feed the elderly. The Liberian First Lady is also caring for the elderly. Since 2018, until the outbreak of COVID-19, Mrs. Weir has provided assorted food rations to nearly 3,000 seniors and physically challenged. I hear them morning. Tell my brother, thank you for so much. Tell my brother, thank you for what. They think what she's doing to work. Look at nothing to give to her. Put them work everything for her. And we want for her to be there until she say, just a tire I want to rest. Not satisfied, Mrs. Weir has constructed a modern home for the elderly and disabled in Buchanan, Grand Bassa County. All these initiatives show the First Lady's way of helping to restore the respect and dignity our seniors deserve. As hundreds of lives are being transformed and thousands of women and girls are being inspired and empowered, Mrs. Weir is neither contented nor complacent. She remains determined and tireless in her efforts until every woman and girl is reached. The City of Hope. Financed solely by private donors, this multi-million dollars project sits on 10 acres of land. A few kilometers outside Monrovia, a gigantic facility drenched in splendor and elegance. After we visited all the orphanages and um, we interacted with possibly more than maybe 30, 40, orphanages. We've gone there to see how the children uh, are being taken care of. Uh, we saw that, number one, they weren't being fed properly, and, and we started on a monthly basis through the Office of the First Lady, started donating um, food items to the, for, to the orphanage for the children. I also noticed that, yeah, the orphanage were doing their best in trying to educate most of our children, but the rooms are over, overcrowded. I, I don't, I, I commend them for the work that they're doing, but I, the environment as well wasn't conducive for a lot of our children. So what I said, I, I, the idea came in that I don't want to interfere with the orphanages and what they're doing, because they have great people also within Liberia who are doing a great job in trying to support our children. So I said, I want to create a school for girls. I want to create a school for girls where they can learn, where I can take some of these children, offload some of these children from the orphanages and have them in the City of Hope, not only for, for education, but also to keep them there and give them a, a, a lifestyle that they probably normally wouldn't get. So that's, what, that's the idea that I had in creating the City of Hope so that the children, I can start with the grassroots because I like grassroots starting from ages three and, and educate them so that we can build and being educated later on, it can, it can help our country. The City of Hope comprises one administrative building, a two-story facility intended for administrative work. It has offices, conference rooms, kitchens, reception areas, restrooms, and an area for relaxation during leisure. A clinic where orphans and members of staff would get first aid medical attention as the need arises. Six bungalows intended to accommodate visiting guests. Each of these facilities is a self-contained one bedroom apartment with living and dining rooms, a kitchen and a laundry. A vocational school and dormitory will provide young and disadvantaged youth from the age of 18 with the needed technical and vocational skills. No child deserves to be in the streets. Three dormitories, 
two exclusively for the children of the Clahoop Academy and their caretakers, a staff quarter, and one dormitory for the vocational training students. A 300 capacity amphitheater or auditorium available to rent for performances and conferences, among others. In this building will also be found the foundation shop, where will be displayed on sale the artwork produced by the students of the vocational training center. Recreation center, indoor pool, gymnasium, restrooms, kitchen, basketball and tennis courts, as well as a mini stadium with a football pitch, a canteen and mini mart, outdoor playground, general warehouse for storing supplies, including donations, palava huts for relaxation and a parking lot. I want to leave a legacy here for the people to remember me as the first lady who truly loves us. I don't know what I can left materially behind me, and I hope the City of Hope will continue to grow way after my existence. And people will remember that this First Lady did it with a kind heart and a kind spirit to support her husband in his quest, to support his people, and to support the good people of Liberia. <laughs> wow. Good morning to my dear sisters. Uh, that, um, Professor Frank, Frank, it made me a, a bit emotional when I see this, you know. Um, invited guests, Dr. Rasha. Uh, my passion to help the least fortunate dates long before I became First Lady in 2018. As mentioned in the video, my motto is to bless as many children as God has blessed me. I've been helping to foster children in the United States, Jamaica, and Africa for a very long time. Becoming First Lady only provided me a wider platform to achieve my purpose to improve lives. On June 20th, 2019, I launched my flagship program, the She's You Movement, hinging on four pillars, health, education, economic empowerment, and gender equality. She's You Movement seeks the overall advancement of women and girls for a better and proper, prosperous Liberia. This flagship program gave birth to several initiatives. The first one is She Cares, She's You. During the COVID-19 outbreak, launched by my First Lady Office in collaboration with Merck Foundation, the Clar Hope Foundation, we reach out to Russia, who immediately accept to partner with us in this program, which aim at assisting the most vulnerable people of our society, and most particularly, women living with HIV AIDS. To better cope and respond to the pandemic, this collaboration was a huge success as many of our targeted population were provided with nose masks, hand sanitizers, personal hygiene items, food, etc. My second, the second is the She's You personal and menstrual hygiene. The goal of this initiative is to improve school attendance provide girls with sustainable sanitary pads and comprehensive menstrual education, increase the self-esteem and creativity of rural girls to fight against poverty, and last but not least, the She's You Reading Program. The primary goal is to promote, promote improved reading and learning skills in elementary school children, skills that may help lead to more successful future for the children who participated. Under the umbrella of my flagship program, the She's You Menstrual and Personal Initiative was launched on June 9, 2021 as a result of my adolescent engagement during a touring in our country, Liberia. I shared my personal experience with the girls about menstruation, the taboos surrounding this issue. We distributed hygiene kits and inspired the girls to pursue their life's dream. 
Our aim is to break the silence on menstruation by sensitizing the beneficiaries, school, churches, communities, and other stakeholders by debunking taboos, myth, and misconception associated with menstruation and reproductive health. We as African First Ladies, unfortunately, cannot only focus on one initiative. We wear many hats in our society in order to care for our respective nation. It is impossible to choose to focus solely on women particular political participation when there, are so many, so, when there are so many who aren't enjoying their basic human rights, such as eating, having portable uh, water, access to education, etc. So to all of you, my sisters, kudos for the amazing job that we are doing. Thank you to our partners like Merck Foundation, who's committed to assisting us in impacting the lives of our people. Thank you to the selfless people like Dr. Russia and Professor Frank for believing in us and trusting us. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Her Excellency, the First Lady of Liberia, Mrs. Claire Waya. For the great initiative of City of Hope and She Is You, it's really amazing. Um, it's like really exciting for the orphanage, uh, the orphans, to uh, have this kind of lifestyle, education, and uh, taking care of them at that level, which is really amazing. Uh, they will be very lucky and they will be very fortunate uh, girls and become very empowered women and maybe leaders, the future leaders of Africa and Liberia. Uh, so it's really great and I'm looking forward to uh, integrate together the uh, sanitary towel production. Uh, it will be a very nice role model of success for other countries so we can and, uh, implement it there. Today also we'll have the experts who provide it for you. Uh, this uh, machine, he will speak about it uh, for other uh, first ladies to uh, take the initiative. Uh, and of course the training also will be provided uh, by them. So we will do that very soon. Also regarding the scholarships, we have provided till now 37 scholarships to librarian doctors, which is 21 of them uh, in fertility, sexual reproductive, so and, uh, and embryology, which is really women health, which is you're also very interested in. So uh, uh, there is also diabetes and hypertension. So all this is really important, and we, as you know, you cannot work only on one initiative. It's like many hats. And we are going to be with you in as many as has as we can. So <laughs> thank you very much. We'll now listen to Her Excellence, Mrs. Monica Chakwera, the First Lady of the Republic of Malawi. I'm going to talk about one program out of all the programs we're doing in Malawi with MEC Foundation. Um, they're helping us with 42 scholarships for medical doctors, and they've already started working in the country. But I thought today I would just talk about uh, girls' program, Educating Linda, because I think that's the, I don't know if you can choose problems, but I think <laughs> I'm choosing that pro pro problem because I think if we help girls education, the future of the country is going to be taken care of. So out of the girls that uh, Make Foundation is helping us, I just wanted to talk about one success story. I think many of you heard about our uh, problems we had in the country. I come from Malawi. It's a small country. We call it the warm heart of Africa because we're very friendly people. I will invite all of you to come and visit us. So uh, we had what we call Cyclone Freddy in the southern region part of the country where there was so much devastation and then schools were washed away, homes were washed away. So I went to visit the school girls. They were Everybody was staying in classrooms because uh, there were no homes. And then it was close to the examination, of the final examination. So I went around encouraging girls to still study, even in those very difficult circumstances. I'm happy to report that 
out of that, uh, our educating Linda program, some 20 girls did very well in the final exams and they passed very well. Now we are expecting them to go to university. I thought that was my success story because we were not expecting anything like this. But uh, they passed very well, despite all those problems we had. And uh, I'm very encouraged to say I think this program will go even further uh, so that we can have girls educated and then uh, all together we have 60 girls that are under that uh, scholarship but 20 of them are the, the one, 19 of them are the ones that did their final uh, secondary school exams and they will be expecting to go to university very soon. Since I thought we only had five minutes, that's what I prepared, but we are also doing uh, all the other programs that we do with uh, Make Foundation. Yeah. Thank you very, very, very much, uh, Your Excellency, Madam uh, Monica Shakwera, the First Lady of Malawi, for this brief. And I know that you are very passionate about girls' education. We talked about this many, many times. We have provided the scholarship for 60 girls in your country for edu girls' education, but also as uh, the scholarships for training doctor, thanks to you that you convinced the doctors because there were not no many as applying for this kind of uh, very prestigious and high level uh, diploma, one year and two year master degree. We have now provided 42 scholarships in many, many specialties like sexual reproductive health and diabetes and cardiovascular and uh, oncology and many. So we're hoping to continue with this as well uh, because it's also focusing very much on health. I believe health and education is hands in hands. Uh, it's really important, both of them, to uh, improve the economy and the social development of any country. So that's why we selected this to be our main focus. So we will continue and thank you very much for um, your great follow-up and passion about girls' education. I now invite Her Excellency Mrs. Maria de Fatima Villanova, uh, the First Lady of uh, the Republic of the Democratic Republic of Sao Tome and Principe, to talk to us about also the gaps in uh, healthcare capacity building and girls' education that can be filled uh, with this partnership with Mark Foundation and also from what you've heard, what you think about the programs in these countries. Hello. Portanto, bom dia, minhas irmãs, as primeiras damas da África. Uh, estou muito feliz em estar cá presente nesta conferência para ouvir as vossas experiências. Acredito firmemente que a violência de direitos humanos mais prevalente e menos visível no mundo, a violência baseada no género em África pode estar correlacionada ao baixo nível de educação, exposição à violência em outros lugares, sistemas patriarcais, desigualdade de género. O surto do coronavírus agravou o impacto das questões sociais e culturais existentes que afetam severamente mulheres e crianças que foram trancadas com os seus agressores e se tornaram vítimas de abuso doméstico mais do que nunca. A violência baseada no género é uma violação fundamental dos direitos humanos das mulheres e tem consequências económicas e sociais adversas para famílias, comunidades e países. Embora a violência baseada no género não seja um problema exclusivo da África, a extensão do problema persiste mais severamente no continente do que em outras partes do mundo. É necessário conscientizar e defender os direitos das mulheres e crianças em África. É o empoderamento das mulheres africanas é crucial para empoderar economicamente as mulheres abusadas e violadas, ajudando-as a identificar oportunidades económicas 
e aprimorar as suas habilidades e capacidades de geração de renda. Estou feliz em trabalhar em estreita colaboração com a Merck Foundation para empoderar as nossas mulheres e levar a conscientização das nossas comunidades sobre as consequências da violência baseada no género. Através de histórias, gostaria de encorajar os meninos a amar e respeitar as mulheres das suas vidas agora e no futuro. Eu gostaria, uma vez cá presente, focar em dois aspectos no meu país. Temos vários, mas para mim, como primeira-dama, toca-me dois aspectos importantes. A educação, porque com falta de recursos financeiros das mulheres no meu país, em que elas vivem nas roças e que para muitos de vocês noutros países são, são meios rurais. Então, essas mulheres são pais e mães de família. Elas é que levam o rendimento para casa e não conseguem o que ganham o dia a dia, não conseguem levar o sustento e pôr as crianças, porque as escolas são distantes nas zonas onde elas vivem. Portanto, era um desses pontos que eu gostaria que me ajudassem. E o outro também, no que toca o apoio, gostaria de pedir o apoio, sobretudo para as mulheres. Porque no meu país, as mulheres que não conseguem engravidar por causa da infertilidade, elas têm um tabu que nós chamamos de tabu, que eles consideram a mulher que não dá filhos, como se fosse uma vaca. Então, eu gostaria de pedir agradecidamente à Fundação Merck, na pessoa da doutora Racha e o doutor Frank, para tentarmos ajudar sobre este episódio, que, que para nós é muito pesado para as mulheres de São Tomé e Príncipe. E gostaria, já agora, aproveitar para agradecer mais uma vez à doutora Racha e ao Dr. Frank, por essa oportunidade de estar cá pela primeira vez presencial na vossa fundação. Muito obrigada. Sim, thank you for being with us and joining our uh, family, Merck, Merck Foundation family. Uh, and of course, as we agreed in our one-to-one -one meeting, we are going to support the initiatives we agreed on and we are going to start immediately after we, uh, the next day after you arrive to Sam Tomei. So uh, we will be there and we will make great success together and a lot of milestones we'll celebrate next year. Uh, so uh, thank you very much for giving us an idea about the gaps and the needs in uh, Sam Tomei and that we are going to be there as long-term partner and we have success stories like we heard today from all other first ladies. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like us now to uh, listen to Her Excellency Amai, Dr. Kuzilia Nagagwa, the First Lady of the Republic of Zimbabwe. Your Excellency is the First Ladies of Africa and um, the Chairman, Professor Dr. Frank and CEO Dr. Senator Rash Rasha. Uh, you, our distinguished guests, I want to say I'm coming out of an election which we had in August, this previous August, and my husband, um, President, Aidy Mnangagwa won the election and where I am coming in from. I want to thank the people of my country who gave him the other second term to run the country. And this has seen me now expanding and going further with what I had started in the past five years. Make foundation, I want to say to you, you are a true and all-weather partner. You are coming into Zimbabwe with the educating of uh, our doctors. You have seen our health system uh, to, to greater heights. And our doctors have benefited a lot, and the areas that we didn't have services are now serviced. And uh, this has also helped the First Lady's Office in uh, advocating more on health issues, backed by the doctors that received education from Mac Foundation. 
And by so doing, I've taken back everybody back to school, regardless of age, so that they're able to talk to the doctors. What is the problem with the health system? So it's now a very educated nation. I've also brought in the cancer awareness programs that women and girls have to be careful of. And we have vaccinated more than 800,000 girls in schools from the ages of 10 to 14 to reduce the cancer uh, problem that we are facing. And mostly, it's hitting uh, us as women. We have also the drug menace, which has hit most of the countries, and um, Zimbabwe is not spared. I'm also working with the people who are living and working on the streets and with these drug addicts, who I want to be off the streets and also their health system to be taken care of. Once they are in those drugs, they are not able to tell what is happening. And we have seen most of our youths dying. The Infertile program that we started uh, long back with Mac Foundation, we received some funds which uh, were sent to these women and uh, they managed to have projects. Now they uh, own their own properties through this project from Mac Foundation. And they're also in the agriculture, which I formed Agri for She, only agriculture for women, that I ask the government to give land to women to do farming to sustain their lives. And those women are in that group. And Mac Foundation, we have found a husband for those women. Who doesn't whip men, husbands, that those who don't beat, those who uh, don't die. Because once you have given them empowerment, that's the life-sustaining uh, program that we look for in these women who are infertile. Because they are facing uh, hard blows, both from where they were born and this acquired family. I'm also working with the dropout from school you know, the girls that who dropped out of school because of uh, COVID-19, which we have also given some projects of sewing and also saying stay in school by uh, going to school on daily buses. And the sewing machines that I've given, now they are able to make their own reusable pads, which they are now making for other uh, girls who can't afford and who can't have those uh, Pads, and I've come up with a sewing factory, which I am now taking all the girls and uh, the infertile women, uh, the middle-aged uh, groups, to come and have uh, the uh, lessons on cutting and designing, then sewing, making their own garments. I've built a clinic in my rural area, which is catering for quite a number of people around where I was born. And some of the doctors who received this education from Mac Foundation are servicing that clinic with the expertise that they received from Mac Foundation. I'm also building a very big hospital in my country, which is named Mother and Child Hospital, catering from the old granny to uh, the baby but all women. And the expertise of these doctors is going to serve in that hospital. So on that one, I am saying additional doctors, Dr. Carriage, are also needed to serve my hospital in addition to what they are doing already. And I'm also on talk show radio, which they have dubbed Talks with Moms. Moms says, am I? But that's the language they use these days, where I talk to them about how to look after themselves. Uh, do you know what you are suffering from? And um, you girls, are you able, women, giving them that strength and also the confidence of talking to other women? Are you able to stand or talk 
um, amongst other people, you know, advising or giving or uh, imparting that knowledge that you have, to have that confidence, or that we are talking it, about it on radio. They ask me questions and I also, you know, uh, answer back and also involve them that inclusivity issue that we want to do, that we do in our country, not leaving any place or anyone behind. So, in a nutshell, Dr. Rachel, Russia, this is where we are now with Make Foundation. The chairman, I want to thank you very much. And my sisters, this is the table where we share and that uh, we, uh, what I'm not, um, not yet done in my country, I take it from you after hearing what you are doing. So it's an encouragement around the table. I thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much, Her Excellency, the First Lady of Zimbabwe, Madame Ogzella, and Dr. Ogzella, and congratulations again for the BHD. <laughs> and uh, I'm so happy that when I came to Zimbabwe, uh, you, the, 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 the organization of everything and meeting the doctors and how the testimonies of the transformation of patient care after the graduation was amazing. The stories, it was really inspiring. Uh, until now, we, ha we provided 100 and three scholarships for doctors in many, many, many specialities, mostly focusing on women health, reproductive health, and oncology, uh, but also other things like diabetes and endocrinology and preventive cardio cardiovascular, obesity and weight management, respiratory and acute management, and pain management and palliative care, and infectious diseases. So many, many specialities. So, uh, and we are going to continue with you, with your support, because you are very much uh, um, a are passionate about providing the training for doctors and they are very grateful for that and they come back and work in the public sector and help the patients who cannot afford and this is the main thing so thank you very very much your excellency <laughs> and uh, thank you very much for professor frank for the support and the guidance to be able to execute this strategy with our excellencies the first ladies of africa uh, i would like to thank uh, uh, the first ladies uh, your Excellencies for being with us. Thank you very, very, very much.